Welcome to this video tutorial for Virtual Rating School with the BMW Z4 GT3 car in the Blanc Pan series on iRacing. This week we head to one of my home circuits, Brands Hatch. The lap I've driven is as always on race fuel in default afternoon weather to match the official series. I'll play the lap first in full before then going into further analysis. Okay, so that was a 1 minute 23.214. So from the list of data packs on the VRS app, um, we're going to select the BMW. And of course, we'll choose week 7, Brands Hatch Circuits, which will load up the session details where you can download lap data, the replay, and the setup, of course. So I'm just going to click on Learn Track, which will load up the analyzer. It will start to play the lap through. I'm just going to pause that and mute it and slow it down to half speed. So those of you who might not have seen uh, this layout, you've got a steering telemetry trace uh, through the duration of the lap, a speed trace and brake and throttle input traces, and some live inputs down here in the bottom left as well. So I'm going to click on sector one, which is going to be the run from the start finish line to the braking zone for turn one so obviously playing it through here your car is going to be up towards the outside edge of the circuit you've got these brake markers to the left now 100 is going to be pretty much my braking reference into this one so I'm actually going to be looking into the apex at this point but this will be in my peripheral and it's uh, a fast corner, is Paddock Hill Bend, so braking hard-ish initially, but not too hard, because you're already turning in the car at this stage. And uh, that's pretty much just to keep the car in line with the edge of the track. So if I play this through, I'm still sort of near the edge of the track by the time I almost reach the end of, th of the braking zone. But notice how much I've bled off the brakes to facilitate the, the track tightening more and more. So we'll just play that through. And you'll see here from the end of the, the braking zone, as it were, where you have this access road on the left, I do actually hold the brakes on all the way into the apex. And, uh, and for me, actually, this corner was the weakest uh, of all the corners on the lap. So it's a little bit scruffy on entry. I've turned in just a bit too tight and that's why I'm playing with the throttle here on the entry just to stabilize just to take some load off the front tires just to stabilize the car on the entry there so as you can see I'm looking for my apex it's blind initially and then as soon as the car hooks up with the apex I pick up the throttle quite aggressively now you notice uh, this will be a similar pattern on all corners. I'll be braking all the way into the apex and then picking up the throttle quite hard at the apex, or in this case, just before. And there'll be a period 
where I'm at the limit of traction and I'm just modulating the throttle waiting for the, the grip to come in before finally committing to full throttle which is going to be at the, the bottom of this corner where you have a lot of compression the, the car will go quite light at this phase through the corner uh, but it will compress down the bottom of the hill and you'll have a lot more grip and I commit to full throttle at the bottom of the of the hill there but if I go just a little bit further on you can do you can see that I just drop a wheel into the gravel which isn't ideal so yeah a little bit scruffy couldn't get the car um, I, I turned in a bit too early which is why I had to kind of compromise my entry which then uh, meant that I was a little bit wide on the exit overall use all of the track gradually bring the car up the hill uh, back off that curb on the entry and then obviously look for your braking zone into Druid's hairpin so we go to sector 3 for that one now you'll see a very clear trace shape here which is um, I brake very hard initially up the hill so the car is compressing into the hill can brake very very aggressively initially but then almost immediately I start to turn in and I simultaneously bleed off the brakes and then I continue to do that all the way into the apex so I'm slowing the car down um, gradually gradually into a very clearly defined minimum apex speed uh, in the middle of the corner so if I play this through you'll see that I brake just before the end of the barrier on the left significantly before the 50 marker but I'm already turning in and as a result I'm having to bleed off the brakes so that I can um, allow for the car to grip, allow for the car to rotate and at this point I don't release the brakes because as soon as I start coasting I'll overrun the middle of the corner and the car won't rotate so I need to keep the front end loaded up to keep the car tight that's very important and then that allows me to pick up the throttle quite quickly in second gear so I am quite heavily traction limited of course and it allows me to, to bring the car back to the apex and, and keep nice and tight on the apex and uh, obviously down the hill I do then reach full throttle obviously on the exit you want to bring the car quite quickly over to the right hand side towards the right hand edge of the circuit to set yourself up for the entry into uh, Graham Hill Bend and again there is a marker on the right which you can use as a brake reference so quite briefly on the brakes this time again pretty much turning in straight away so you don't want to brake too hard don't brake too hard and also the trajectory that I'm on will take me even wider um, as I finish braking so now I'm finally coming in towards the the apex of the corner from the edge of the circuit and uh, and to control the rotation of the car I've just breathed in the throttle slightly there just to unload the front tires so the car doesn't turn in too aggressively and then on the apex so I've held the brakes again all the way into the apex to get the car to rotate I'm back on the throttle and I've gone really quite quickly back on the throttle on or just before the apex and then through the exit you can open the car up there I'm opening the car up and then I and then I commit to full throttle and I also allow the car out onto the extra runoff on the exit where you kind of have this grass crete area which uh, still has a decent amount of grip in, in iRacing so uh, as long as you bring the car back onto the track by the time the curb finishes so that you avoid getting a penalty so then of course heading now towards Surtees turn 4 again there's a little bit of grass crete on entry which you can take advantage of if you're careful just allows you to open the corner up even more now in race trim if you have no cars behind you this is the quickest line which is to turn in quite late and quite gently so again braking at the 50 marker here on the right braking hard initially and then bleeding off gradually more and more and more but not turning in too hard so I've got a very late apex I'm quite far away from the inside of the corner at this point so I'm roughly in the middle of the circuit by the time I uh, begin to come alongside the access road on the right and I do actually coast a little bit here 
and that is because I've turned in a tiny bit too early and I'm worried about apexing before this curve sticks out. I don't want to hit this curve, that is very important. So I avoid that nicely and then I pick up the throttle. Again you can use this reference. So look for this white line. You should be able to pick up the throttle significantly before that white line. So that's what I've done. I'm in third gear. So I pick up the throttle very quickly but then I modulate and uh, so I'm operating just below the point at which the, the rear tires lose traction. I don't want to rely on the traction control at this point. I want to be just within that and then of course I open the car up for the exit. So I'm just going to speed this up again now down towards the fast sweeping right of Hawthorne Bend which is turn 5 up the hill again you've got some references here you've got this barrier on the left which ends in between the 150 markers which is going to be my braking reference a very very fast corner so you can't afford or it's not needed to brake hard but in order to get the best rotation the car will understeer if you're coasting so braking initially hard and then turning off and bleeding off but then holding on to that brake pedal all the way through the corner until the apex so I'll just play that through, don't apex too early tighten the car more and more and then if we just go back to here, so I haven't quite apexed there but I pick up the throttle um, before anyway and that's because the trajectory that the car is on now is taking me tighter and tighter so I can afford to get on the throttle slightly before the apex now I'm apexing and I've almost reached full throttle and of course opening the car up you've got a little bit of kerb on the exit here which can collect you up if you do run a little bit wide but it's uh, quite short and turns to grass quite quickly so you need to try and be off it by the time it finishes so now towards turn 6 Westfield Bend this is uh, a much longer corner um, and it kind of goes light through the middle and then down the, the hill as, uh, as the circuit falls away. I just want to show you this as well there is a correction for oversteer here so I'm turning in quite hard and the car is rotating really well so I open the steering up quite suddenly that's a correction for oversteer. If I didn't do that I would risk having more of a significant slide so that is, that's fine. It's good to make a correction before the car gets too out of shape so into turn 6 now now braking significantly before the 50 marker this time you don't want to brake too hard similar to the previous corner and uh, a little bit slower down into third gear for this one and you can really cut the, the apex here so braking all the way into the apex for best rotation and get fully onto that curb so I'm almost at the apex, apex itself where I've, again I've picked up the throttle quite quickly I'm almost fully over the curb there and then on the exit the circuit falls down the hill so the car goes quite light and that's why you really have to be patient with the throttle you can't commit to, to, to full throttle too early and, uh, and also you need to anticipate that you might get some oversteer as you allow the car wide onto this curb on the exit as well down the hill uh, a small correction for oversteer again as I try and keep the car using all of the track um, but of course avoiding the grass we'll go to sector 8 but we're not going to break y just yet so we'll continue to play that through now just before the 50 marker on the right so we're not quite at the edge of the circuit here yet um, but as we break the car will travel closer towards the, the outside of the corner so we just see there as I really start to bleed off the brakes at that point and really start to turn in so you'll see I start to turn in just there but again I hold the brakes on all the way into the apex to avoid the car understeering so I'm really trying to keep the front end loaded up and again another corner where you can take liberties on the apex curve and really use a lot of that of course it is completely blind on the entry so um, in terms of a reference you've got this uh, gravel trap on the left 
I turn in quite hard just before that ends. And I've almost got a little bit of brake induced oversteer, which is why I actually straighten the wheel in this region, which was caused by the heavy braking as the front end loaded up a bit too much and the car rotated quite nicely for me there. So just balancing the car on the limit, this, this kind of behavior is normal. And again, picking up the throttle on the apex. Now I'm a lot more hesitant on the exit this time because too many times I have overcommitted when I got back on the throttle and I ran wide on the exit. And this time I've actually lef left a little bit of margin for safety, which is um, definitely the better option. So then back down towards turn eight now, another tricky corner which is very very narrow especially in the middle and you really want to try and hook up with the curb on the inside in the apex there's a little bit of camber in there as well which can help hook the car around so you really want to make sure that you don't miss your turn in point and miss the apex so again well before the 50 marker brake quite hard initially but then uh, as you start to turn in which is quite shortly after the 50 marker you want to bleed off those brakes but then don't let go of them keep the front end loaded up, get on that curb on the inside and then get aggressively on the power and then modulate on the way out so that you don't run wide. Now I hesitate a little bit more, I probably got in the throttle just a bit too soon there so you'll see on the exit just run a little bit wide there and uh, I have some nasty oversteer which you can see in the steering trays and I get on this curb a little bit more than would be desirable. So you can see my steering on the exit is a little bit messy. Um, I'm just trying to, to stop the car from sliding. Now the, the danger here really is I'm almost, I'm extremely close to getting an instant penalty there. So, and obviously that would invalidate a qualifying lap. Um, obviously in the race it's okay, but generally it is risky. So you don't want to make a habit of doing that. So into the last corner then, We'll go to sector 10 for this one. Again, significantly before the 50 marker, just after the 100 marker, hard on the brakes initially. Very, very similar pattern of inputs to all these corners, really. Um, it's just all about getting your line absolutely right. So hard on, bleed off the brakes, start to turn in just before the access road on the left, and then pick up that apex and the car's going to go really light here, so you'll notice that I'm not able to commit to the throttle as aggressively as some of the other corners. So we'll go to chase view. So again, I pick up the throttle just at the apex there, but I hesitate as the circuit falls away down the hill, finally committing to full throttle before I reach the edge of the circuit, because you want to take advantage of all the track on the exit. And then across towards the start finish line, you need to keep the car nice and tight down the bottom, towards the, the inside wall there and then as you go towards the, the first corner you can then gradually bring the car, allow the car to gradually move back over to the left. You can find qualifying and race setups, telemetry and replays over at virtualracingschool.com where you can also book one-on-one -on -one tuition with myself and top drivers from the likes of Coanda Simsport. Good luck for this week and feel free to post any questions or comments below. Thanks for watching.